It's the Powerhouse Woman Show. You're a powerhouse woman, successful, accomplished, but you know the time has come for something else. To pivot, make a shift, or do what you've been putting off for a long time. I'm Monica Pierre, a media entrepreneur, Emmy Award winning journalist and coach, and I'm on a mission to help you figure out your path forward and create powerful new stories about your life and legacy. There's more ahead. Time to do the greatest work of your life. Hello and welcome once again to the Powerhouse Woman Show. It is about doing the greatest work of your life. It doesn't mean that what you've done in the past doesn't count, but you are on a new path, a new mission. And this is an interesting and topic that we really want to spend some time on today, and it's on purpose. What is purpose? What's the difference between vision and purpose? What really fuels you? And are you being pulled and tossed and, and, and pushed in a different direction? And what are you going to do about that? Well, this is going to be your show today because we are joined by the one and only Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn. And Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn is a PhD, a mental health and wellness expert, professional keynote speaker, and author of the upcoming book, Playing a New Game, A Black Woman's Guide to Being Well and Thriving in the Workplace. It's going to be released in October, October 11th by Balance. That's an imprint of Grand Central Publishing. And we are just so delighted that you are joining us today to talk about this very important topic. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Wilborn. Thank you for having me. I am so happy to be here and to have this discussion. You are pretty excited about the discussion. And you did tell me before we started that you cannot wait to have this discussion. Why are you excited to have this discussion? Well, I think part of the excitement is I'm not talking about something um, that is just for other people. I'm also talking about something that I'm living right now myself. And I think there's a lot of value in being able to have a conversation about an experience um, that is not only transformative for other people, for others, but one that you are in the midst of being transformed by yourself. And so um, I think it's that. I also think that the excitement has a lot to do with, um, and you, you mentioned this in some of our offline comments or conversations, that I think there's a yearning for it. I think we are in a space where people are looking for more, feeling the need for more, feeling that tug, feeling that pull. And I think whenever there's an opportunity to respond, particularly for me as someone who sees herself as, as a teacher, if you will, to be able to respond to that need um, is exciting. And, and so, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I want to get into what's happening for you, but what are you noticing in general? What is this? Is it because of the pandemic? Is it because of what we've had, the chance to be made, or decisions that we've made? Is it because of the great resignation? What's happening in the area of purpose and what people are being led to do? Yeah, I mean, I think certainly the pandemic jump started that for a lot of people. You know, I certainly remember uh, the start of 2020, how excited I was. I think 2020 was right with all sorts of uh, symbolism around vision and clarity. Um, I know for myself, I wasn't exempt from that feeling of the excitement around vision and clarity at the start of 2020. I also felt that something uh, was shifting in the atmosphere. It was going to be big, and I didn't know what that was. Uh, professionally, I was certainly looking to make a shift because um, I was starting to feel the pull to open a, a, a group private practice, a group or to expand rather my, my private practice, which was a solo practice at the time, to a group mental health practice because mental health services is such a huge need, even obviously before the pandemic. And so I was sort of anticipating a change professionally and had taken some steps to, to really develop as a leader in doing that. And then March 13th happened, right? And then the bottom of the world fell out. And we were all left with trying to figure out uh, what was this new now, right? And initially, um, 
there was a lot of uncertainty about that was, but what that meant and, and what that would look like. And of course, over the last couple of years, many of us have had an opportunity to, to kind of really dig deeper and reflect on do who do we want to become as we emerge out of this space? And do we want to go back to where we were, or is this an opportunity for us to, to, to really become something more, become something greater? Um, and so I think the pandemic created a pause for us to think and reflect and to decide whether or not we wanted to become something more, serve more, have more, live more. And yeah, so I think it was certainly a part of it. So what is happening with Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn? So how are you saying yes to this new now for yourself? And particularly when you're so successful and well known in one arena and is this new direction a 180 from what you're doing right now? I love that question because I think it sort of gets at the heart of purpose. You know, so what what happened for me happened it, it happened during the pandemic, this the shift towards really courageously moving in purpose, but it had actually started before. So for me what happened is uh, you know, I, of course, I mentioned that um, March 13th hit, that was when the bottom fell out and pandemic was sort of raging or beginning to rage. And of course, then May of that same year happened. And by that time, we had had the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Maude Arbery. And as a mother of two Black sons and a wife of a Black husband um, and, you know, a toxic and... Um, traumatic social and political climate, I had gotten to the point where I was just overwhelmed. And even though I was a leader, right, as a, as a clinician, I, had a, uh, I was a business leader, as a professional in the counseling profession, I was a leader. Um, I found myself wanting to withdraw and find myself only having enough energy and barely enough energy really to lead myself. And so I was going inward. And in June, my one of my, my sisters passed from heart complications at 55 a couple of years earlier. My brother died same age from the same thing. And I was in the midst of a seven day spiritual fast, June 28, 2020, because I actually documented it. I was lying in my hammock, Monica, reading, drinking my coffee, reading scripture. And I came across scripture in second Corinthians uh, and it was like, God, are you calling me into, are you calling me into ministry? And of course I read and then I reread and I read some more and reread and read some more. And it was clear that God was calling me in, into ministry. But what was striking about that moment is that that was actually the second time he had done that. The first time he had done it was years prior. So the shift then became oh my gosh, what does that look like? What does ministry look like? How do I do that? How does one prepare for ministry? Because I had spent 20 years as a professional counselor. I know how to do that, right? I know how to be that. I know who I am in that. I had no idea what it meant to be someone in ministry or even what this ministry was supposed to look like. And so the last, since that time, the last couple of years has been really being intentional about staying in conversation with God about what does that look like? What does it mean? What what are you actually calling me to do? And, and to, to get back to your question more succinctly, the shift now is this bridge between the clinical world that I've been in with the spiritual realm, because there's a void there. There's a void between uh, in the clinical space, how we support those who are grappling with spiritual and existential issues. And then of course, we know in the faith community, there's a gap between how we deal with mental health and wellness as an actual issue. You know, I always like to sort of joke that it could be the devil or it could <laughs> simply be depression, right? <laughs> like it, right. it could be that. And so in this new space that, I, that I'm in, just to sort of, you know, again, kind of wrap up my answer to your question here. It's really about gaining clarity about this new identity as teacher, because one of the things that happens 
from a spiritual realm is that when God changes your lane, he changes your name. And so I am, yeah, when he changes your lane, he changes your name. And so it's no longer Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, the counselor, is Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, the teacher, and who is she in that space? Mm. That is so powerful. So when God changes your lane, he changes your name. Because here's why uh, sometimes I get a, you know, a struggle point for myself, because sometimes I think if you're being called to something or, or reinvented or a transition, that you have to let go of what was before. You know, basically decide I'm going to pull up the stakes, break camp, and go out. And that basically all that I was before is over. What yes. are your thoughts on that? Or do you bring parts of yourself, even though you have a new name now? Sure. I think that's a wonderful question. So the, the truth is, it's a both and. And I think, I think both and is true for most things. There are some things you have to let go of. The reason why I didn't respond to the call to ministry in when I was living in Memphis, you know, several years prior was because I wasn't really I wasn't willing to let go. I wasn't willing to let go of the things that I was doing, I, you know, drinking and partying, whatever. Right. My plans, the, the, the things that I wanted to do, I wasn't willing to let go of those things. then, And so I, the answer was was no. Right. But when God called me the second time, I was willing to let go of. And part of the letting go is there are some, there are some habits, there are some uh, beliefs, there are some people, some places, some spaces you do have to let go of to be able to operate fully and optimally in the space that you are being called to. Um, and then there are some things that you absolutely are bringing with you along the way, because one of the things about purpose is that purpose comes from God. God gives us purpose. God is a creator. He created us for purpose, with purpose, on purpose. Right. And so there's a specific um, aspect of traces that I think God kind of leaves little traces along the way of this is something you're going to need to take with you. But there's some things you're going to need to leave for you to walk into this new space. So for me, for example, I'll say, you know, God said one of the things that he told me, and this shocked many people, self-included, Tammy, I need you to shut down your counseling practice. Mm. Shut it down. And and of course, I did, I did the thing that many of us do, right? Because we, for some reason, we don't realize that God is omniscient. And I'm, I said, God, are you sure? And, so it wasn't my, it wasn't phase it out. It was shut it down. Well, what was interesting is once I said yes, it was a phase because as a clinician, I can't just shut it down. It's unethical, right? It's there would be there's an ethical mandate to how you approach the closing of a practice. But initially, it was okay. I'm going to stop taking certain clients. It, there was indeed a phasing. But then when God spoke very clearly, this needs to end and it needs to end by this moment, it was sort of a shutting down. And so that for me was something that I'm like, well, God, are you sure? And, you know, I always like to joke that in my head, God is flipping. He's from the night ward. So God was like, really? <laughs> You're asking me if I'm sure? <laughs> I am more than sure. Are you ready? Not if I'm sure, but are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, that's amazing. We want to welcome, uh, we have a viewer, Danielle. Good morning, your workflow. Uh, good to see you. Good Thank morning. you for joining. Good, good morning, good morning. So is there, a, I know you say that purpose is from God, but is there a definition for purpose? Because again, people interchangeably use the word vision and purpose. Sure. But in our conversation, you have a distinction between the two. Well, so I, I talk, I distinguish between purpose and passion, right? And so um, passion is the thing that you can do, right? And so somebody who has passion is something they can do, something that they likely desire to do. Passion is usually mostly about you. Oftentimes it's sort of couched in being about others um, versus 
purpose is what you were created to do and are called to do. And with purpose, purpose is about God because he created you for a purpose, on purpose. Um, and so the distinction there, I think, is, is essential because oftentimes we sort of misconstrue passion for purpose, um, but but passion is one of those things that there's low accountability. I could be passionate about something today and then tomorrow I'm passionate about something else. And so there's a level of, but and there's no accountability, right? So if I stop being passionate about, let's say ballet dancing, I mean, I'm just throwing an example out there. There's no accountability for me not showing up in that capacity, right? And so it becomes fleeting. With purpose, there is accountability because it comes from God. So you're accountable to God when you don't when you don't walk in it. And it tends to be more fixed. And so when I say fixed, that's when you start to see um, and hear people talk about, I used to see this in, in my clinical pra practice often, that sense that something's just not right. I'm, I'm, there's something that's missing. I don't I don't quite feel fulfilled. I've done all these things and I still don't have, you know, ugh, something's quite missing. That's because purpose is fixed. You may have different plans, but God plans never, God's plans never change. And so you can go through life and do all the things you want to do, but he hasn't changed his mind about what he said he created you to do. But there's also and you can uh, talk to me about this or even push back on this, but there's also an accountability on the part of the person who's been given the purpose. You're just not going to sit there and let it manifest magically, correct? Absolutely. And so part of that, part of the, the difference between passion and purpose and that, and that specific space of accountability is when you understand that purpose comes from God, you understand the necessity to seek God as the source of your plans, you seek to you seek God as the primary source for how you are to approach and to navigate what it is that God wants you to do, rather than you just relying on your own thoughts or your own desires, so on so forth. So I'll give you an example. At the start, before we, we jumped online, you said, "Oh, how did the event go on Monday?" Right. Because right. Uh, some of you may know who, who, who's online. Certainly, Monica, you know that I had planned a webinar, a paid webinar event called Manifesting Your Purpose um, to talk more about some of the things that we're talking about here. And so I was excited about that because God gave that to me. I was very clear about that. And so as I got as we got closer to the registration date, I could hear this voice say, I gave it to you but I didn't give it to you like that. Hmm. I didn't give that to you. This particular, the, the web event, now the, the mastermind is a, a different experience. I did not give you that particular message for you to make people pay for it. I gave that to you to give to the people. And if they want to give something to you, right, if they want to donate or give to you to give to the message, they can. But I didn't give you that to give to the people to make them pay for it. And I had to do an about face. And what I ended up doing, it was I posted, a, I did post the video, a video that night, basically kind of sharing my story. But I was very clear, uh, God said, <laughs> this is what I told you to actually do. And so you will have an, you audience will have an opportunity to participate in this event next Monday, same time but it's going to be free and donation based. Ah. The accountability there was my willingness to yield, to be obedient and to say, I hear you, God. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I work for myself. So if I don't work, I don't get, I don't eat. Right. But because I know that God is a provider and because I know he's a sustainer and because I know he's true to his word. If God says what he says, I'm going to listen because I'm accountable to his purpose for what he created me to do. And this can be sometimes a very scary or on shaky ground period, particularly if, you know, where's the revenue being generated? You know, I, you know of course it makes sense to charge for it because, you know, you bring a lot of value. We go on these online courses that we take ourselves as entrepreneurs sure. and there's a way to do it, a system to do it. But again, 
you have to always be listening, right? Listening to what God is saying to you and directing you because just because it works for someone else, it may not be the path that you have been assigned to do. Absolutely. I think it's such an important point to make because if, you know, I'm going back to your notion initially, you mentioned about vision. If God gives you vision, he has given, he has embedded within that provision, right? There's an embedded provision within the vision. And so you don't have to worry about, because the other thing that the, the word talks about is you're going to eat. If he feeds birds and he clothes, right? Why would he let his special prized possession be hungry? Uh, he's not. And so being attuned to God's word, but seeking, not just not just listening for, being intentional about studying. You know, I wake up every morning between four and five o'clock a.m. Nobody's walking and talking in my house, right? And I'm the first thing I do after I turn on my coffee pot is I'm on my knees because I gotta have my coffee. Yes, ma'am. I'm on my knees praying. I'm reading scripture every single morning because the word gives a rootedness. It gives an anchor. The word is a book of instruction, but oftentimes we treat the word and we treat God as crisis. You know, we treat God as a crisis counselor and his word as a crisis manual. His book, it was never intended to be that way. It was intended to be more instructive. And so some of that intentionality is about recognizing it does require some some action on your part. This is not a passive experience. It's very much so a very active experience. We do have a, this is not only a live show, Dr. Wilborn, it's an interactive show. So we have uh, work your workflow. Danielle, I have totally been there where I made my own interpretation of his word and I had to redirect. Love that you shared that. Thank you, Danielle, for coming forward and saying that as well. Because again, you know, we always want it to look like it's all happening. You know, sure. <laughs> there's no pivot, there's no bobbing, there's no weaving. We got it. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. You know, I wanted to kind of speak to that a little bit, if I may. Do we have, are we good on time? Just a couple more minutes and then we'll talk about your book that's coming up. But go ahead. Sure. Fast. Thank you so much. So there's a cup, there's a reason for why we have the shoulds in our mind, right? I call them the shoulds. Some of that comes from society, right? So some of that comes from how we are socialized to pursue our lives, particularly as it relates to vocation and such. You know, I was told go to school, get an education. So basically you can get a good job, take care of yourself and not need a man for anything. That's not exactly reflective of purpose, <laughs> right? That's not, that doesn't speak to something that is transcendent and greater. And so a lot of times how we are socialized, the messages that we get from our families, from um, even spiritual faith communities can influence how we make sense of the, you know, and, and the courage to, to actually walk in purpose. I also want to say something about this idea of story. So the the stories we tell ourselves, right? My life should look like this. I certainly remember uh, buying into the notion, I have a PhD, you know, why am I still struggling? You know, why, <laughs> why, why does it, you know, why, why are my bills still uh, an issue, right? Because I was socialized to believe that the more education you have, the better your life will look. Mm -hmm. And that's not exactly true. Not only that, I was told there was something about education that was also supposed to, to replace or to stand in for happiness and joy and satisfaction. One of the times that stand out to me as significant in my life is shortly after receiving my PhD, having what I call a breakdown. Because here I was a doctor, right? I was able to call myself a doctor, but I didn't feel different. Mm -hmm. I didn't look different. My bills didn't look different. We were still struggling in a small little apartment. And so there was something about this, the story that, that I was initially told that then became the story I told myself that kept me from really being brave and courageous uh, to really kind of to step out on faith and walk in that purpose. And here's the final thing I'll say about that. When you're walking in purpose, purpose is a sacrifice. 
it's a very selective sacrifice because each of us uniquely have been identified for a specific purpose. And so it's, you, I think you used this word earlier. It's strange. It was strange to tell my husband, um, babe, uh, I, I'm actually going to be closing the practice. What do you mean you're closing the practice? Which that wasn't exactly his response, but that was sort of the, t the nature of, well, what you going to do? Well, I'm going to do the okay, how are we going to make it? Because God didn't call a group conference when he called me. Yes. He, so he called me. And so now here I am having, to, I'm sacrificing and, and it's strange because I'm in a space that I am unfamiliar with. I haven't necessarily been prepared for. And yet God says, I'm preparing you now. You're being prepared now. You this this is the preparation phase and you can only trust me through it you'll see uh at the end my glory so wow, wow. i mean we're going a little bit longer and that's okay because this is important and i know there are people who are going to be watching later or this is going to resonate with them so at this point um there's anything you want to say about manifest your purpose that's coming up i know there's a second option you can say that but i really also want to hear about the book Absolutely. Playing a new game, a black woman's guide to being well and thriving in the workplace. And a little bit, this kind of came together fairly quickly, right? Getting all this done and having the, the book, book ready to be released in October 2022. Well, no, the book has actually been um, a few years in the making. Um, but uh, actually, it was I think it was 2021 that I was um, that I got the book deal um and was able to complete complete the manuscript and now of course have it be released in october but it's i've actually been speaking and writing about the topic of black women's experiences with race and gender stereotypes in the workplace as a wellness issue for about 10 years so it's it's you know it's because it's a um a mix of my research my clinical experiences and my own research it's actually been a thing that's been a bit of a journey so October 11th um, of this year, obviously, we're going to be doing book launches and all the things. So people can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, also on Facebook at Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, where they can learn about the Manifesting Your Purpose web event that's coming up uh, Monday, May 30th at 630 Central Standard Time. That's actually going to be a free event donation based if you feel led to donate you can absolutely do that but you won't have to charge for that uh, and then on june 6 7 and 8 we're doing a three-day manifesting your purpose mastermind from 6 30 to 7 30 so it's and it's online um and that is a paid event and you can learn about both events both on my instagram Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn on Facebook, Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn on LinkedIn, Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, as well as uh, my website, Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn.com, where you can actually learn more information about the book, which is on actually on pre order. So, oh, great. Okay, that's a way to support you as well. Is there anything that you may or may not have wished you'd have done two years ago? With your purpose, are you, or do you feel you're right where you need to be with your purpose? All roads lead to where I am right now. Yeah, all roads lead to where I am not right now. I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Wonderful. Well, thank you. We're glad you were supposed to be here today on the Powerhouse Woman Show, Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn. Thank you so much for being with us. I have the pleasure of, of getting to be in your presence many times, and it's always inspiring and uplifting. And you walk not only in purpose, but in dignity and eloquence as well. So I appreciate you being on the show today. Well, coming from the legendary, the <laughs> legendary Monica Pierre, and I say that with all humility. Yes, and I didn't push back at all. I didn't push back. <laughs> I say that with all humility and appreciation and, grat and, and gratitude. Thank you very much for your support and the grace that you've also shown me in the interactions we've had. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on a second. And thanks to all of you for joining us today on the Powerhouse Woman Show. It's purpose. You, you're the one. You'll have to fight it and doubt it, answer it, 
as well. And we'll talk to you next week on the Powerhouse Woman Show.